Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Anna Makul, with you at PTB World. In today's show, we will be taking a look at two important stories. The first is in reference to a clarification that has been issued by the military's media wing that has spoken about uh, statements regarding the previous chief of army staff's uh, off the record interview that he spoke uh, to the media that has been circulating in a private news channel, uh, in which statements that have been made have been clarified by ISPR, claiming that this is not something uh, that was said uh, in context. Uh, and that, that the real situation is absolutely different and the military's uh, combat preparedness uh, is never in doubt and that no military official uh, is going to put that in doubt as well. He further clarified uh, these statements claiming that the army is uh, forever prepared uh, to deal with any untoward uh, incident, uh, any particular threat facing the country and that uh, the statements coming from the previous chief army staff were given out of context. We know that earlier a senior journalist in a private news channel talked about how the previous chief of army staff I had talked about question marks regarding the army's preparedness uh, and also talked about other things with regards to uh, the uh, relationship with India, particularly with reference to the issue of Kashmir, claiming that some sort of a deal was being formed around it, after which the uh, Prime Minister of India was supposed to visit Pakistan and that the then Foreign Minister and Prime Minister of Pakistan were unaware about the situation. And later on, of course, uh, this was something that was also spoken about by the Chief of Army Staff in a visit to the Foreign Office. And he also, of course, talked about uh, the uh, details regarding uh, weaponry and the operational preparedness of the army saying that it is not ready for combat and this of course is what the ISPR is claiming has been said out of context and it's important of course in terms of the impact that it has on the way that the integrity of uh, this institution and the capability of the institution is being perceived at the moment both within and outside of the military and then of course both within and outside Pakistan. So we're going to be taking a look at that in our first segment of the show today. Our next one is going to focus on the a current chief of army staff's visit to China. Uh, we know that he's on a four-day official visit to the country and there have been numerous engagements with regards to military relationship and defense ties between the two countries. And this is important in terms of uh, the current scenario that Pakistan is facing, not only just in the uh, defense uh, terms, but also in terms of the political and economic terms that uh, China and Pakistan have historically enjoyed this relationship. And then, of course, uh, with reference to the IMF, the way that there uh, is uh, a lot of hope and expectation and help coming in from China on that ground as well and whether or not there will be any more uh, scenario that we will see as a result of this visit towards any economic progress. Of course on the defense ties it is uh, claimed by both the side that the military to military cooperation and defense relationship between both the countries needs to be enhanced and uh, further developed and, and, and numerous of course projects under this have been part of the discussions and as they continue we will be exploring what this will mean in terms of uh, Pakistan's relationship with China and then of course what sort of significant measures can be taken with specific reference to the military relationship of the two countries. For this and more, as always in the studios, I've been joined by senior analyst Farooq Patafi. We've also been joined for our first segment regarding the claims by the ISPR by Brigadier Retired Mr. Harris Nawaz, who's a senior analyst. Thank you very much, Mr. Harris Nawaz, for joining us and being a part of the discussion. And let me start with you with reference to what the ISPR has claimed. Of course, it's important earlier as well uh, when there was a maiden press conference by the DG ISPR, it was important for him to uh, re uh, reiterate the fact that uh, the sole uh, source of information needs to be the ISPR uh, and that is where the media should also be taking its information from. Um, and with reference to, of course, the, the way that news has been circulating around the previous Chief of Army Staff's uh, talks and statements, it's Im it was important of course for him to clarify this but I want to understand how exactly uh, will this be interpreted and what it means and when we talk about the operational preparedness of the army whether or not statements like these have a significant impact of raising question marks on its actual operational preparedness. I think it was uh, very unfair statements by we understand there were one or two anchors and therefore there was a Journalist Samit Meer, we all know what his intention about the military forces and uh, that we always uh, deplore. But the point is, when in Indian flag operations were carried out in Pulwama, immediately after that, you must have seen that how Pakistan Army Armed Forces responding befittingly. And they responded the way I think the whole world and Pakistan also do it properly. And that too, but it's 100% it was probably on 5th August 2019. If you recollect, after evocation of uh, they said to the 370 and 35A, then in a Indian illegally held Jammu and Kashmir, what happened? 
that was the fight that pakistan services and pakistan responded very promptly immediately we downgraded our relation with the indian indian high commissioner was sent back to then also be finished all trade bilateral trade that was not carried it was also finished so that was a very clear in, incident and second if you recap again they talked about the peace fire pakistan wanted cease fire with kashmir and that were totally out of context the point is that it cease fire has already planned in south and it will be enforced later on of course it broke out many times we have seen for violation and then ultimately a tactical level is decided with the indians when they wanted to have a cease fire because they thought it is uh, out of context in a way that both sides are kashmir the muslim kashmir in pakistan side kashmir side indian and kashmir side and they had some a lot in their life property they were really they were something so it was decided to have a cease fire but it was to fact otherwise that i think put to everyone that they could not doubt about it then of course seeing all economic crunch difficulty seeing it in last defense budget we have maintained operation readiness we have never compromised on any any activity and that we proved on uh, i think uh, on 7 february 2019 when indian went for uh, misadventure how we responded how we brought down indian aircraft the whole world knew and we never compromised on those things i think these things should never be done by the generally we know they all well known pakistan and then they have become cheap design and this reading public and the journalists that is to and one i think that all pakistan should name it that is very very clear and this is what happened fifth generation war pakistan is under fifth generation war attack so we are all it and that direct the enemy is that have a divide between pakistan army and the people of pakistan because they are packed together they have a trust in each other and they want to divide because they like one thing that pakistan military that started especially under the command of chief arms of the last munir we have defeated terrorism we have eliminated terrorism especially single handed without support from any of the army the state in afghanistan there are 51 countries of nato could not do a terrorism and they could not defeat a on uh, tariq taliban and we did that was a great threat let that time to reply now is the time we have to target pakistan army pakistan force and we have to create a divide because people of pakistan lack trust in pakistan army that is the time they will hit pakistan and they will achieve their target and the examples are iraq india libya where army was weak you know trust the people of uh, those countries and they achieved their goal so those are the reason why it is done but our journalists and there very very few who have always been talking to the city and journalists like hamid amir aha i always they have a different times and that is very very bad very harm to the country as a whole and they must see at that time when in 2021 when the a court jan bajpa was saying all this then why you kept quiet why didn't you speak at that time and then put going out of the context no army chief that we show you whether it is bajwa or any say that we are not prepared we we cannot fight with him not at all economic that means we have this thing we have cut short our pact we have cut short our own exercise but the point is we have never compromised on of and training of our arm force they are fully prepared all the time let tell you one thing that day indian come to know that pakistan military is not capable of defending itself indian will not take a minute to come and attack that is a very clear example second of thing we must understand that pakistan for kashmir and pakistan army kashmir is the most important if you read like general asmir after take uh, being promoted third december 2000 He immediately went to line of control and Indian help a accident. And there he talked about that we are well prepared and let me warn Indian that let me do all Indian government and Indian army never try to do any misadventure. This side, in case you ever do, 
we we have all the capabilities to defend ourselves, not only defend, but will take what to your territory. So what then we have then that we have proved in many times. The only thing you must understand that this is the time. This is not the time. Create a wedge between Pakistan army, but Pakistan rather every effort should be done to cement the most existing strong bond between Pakistan army and people of Pakistan. Right, absolutely. Um, and it's important, of course, uh, to be able to uh, further understand this a bit more. And Farooq, I want to uh, also um, take a look at this from the perspective, of course, with regards to information circulating around the media as well and the importance of uh, uh, its sanctity and the way that it has the impact on institutions and the credibility, of course, of the army or any other institution. Um, and I understand that there is uh, the ISBR talking about uh, um, it being the sole source of information and uh, doing some sort of damage control in terms of what they believe uh, seems to be as misinterpretation or mm -hmm. misperception of what the statements have been or uh, regarding any army chief's uh, concerns about operational preparedness. What sort of a damage do you still think is, is possible when we take a look at the scenario where we already have the military establishment under uh, uh, all sorts of political question marks that are being raised and the way that the public is also viewing it as differently and of course there are followers uh, with regards to media organizations as well that believe otherwise uh, to whatever the DJ aspect must be saying. Right, uh, Sana, when you said damage control, I was about to ask what damage control, what uh, damage per se? Uh, why? Because General Bajwa, regardless of what he was, where he was, he has retired and now he no longer actually commands any policy, he doesn't direct policy, he is not in charge of anything, right? Uh, so um, uh, honestly, I don't think that uh, any uh, thing spoken on television can jeopardize your national security. Uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, what uh, Brigadier Harissa was saying about our battle pre preparedness, I think that the entire world knows um, uh, that we are a battle hardened, uh, our army is a battle ha hardened army and uh, we have fo fought the impossible war not only uh, on our borders but also on our own turf as well, which is one of the most difficult uh, wars to actually fight. Uh, having said that, uh, I will uh, disagree with uh, Brigadier Saab regarding the intent of these two journalists, right? Hamid Mir and Naseem Zara, uh, both are uh, people that I personally know and I respect them as well. I'm pretty sure that when they were in that meeting, this is what they must have perceived. I think that there might be some communication gap and I'm going to qualify that as well. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in this meeting. But I've been in similar meetings around the same time. General Bajwa in those days was actually doing exactly more or less the same thing. You know, 20, 25 journalists, and then he would actually have a heart to heart. Uh, I found General uh, Bajwa to be very articulate. Uh, he was, uh, I mean, I thought that he was glib as well. Uh, but um, unfortunately, he had one tragic flaw. And let me talk about that tragic flaw as well. He had this desire to be liked. I don't think that any soldier needs to have that desire. Because he was articulate, I said that why don't you actually say all these things, whatever you're saying, directly to the camera, right? Mm -hmm. That becomes easier because India does this as well. All over the world now, army chiefs have, have started speaking to the media. That somehow reinforces filters as well. Uh, but, uh, the, you know, during my interactions, uh, whenever I was around, I felt that there were many questions which were still unanswered. But I have been waiting for the day when General Saab actually completes his two years out of the office. Uh, after which the, the ban on him uh, to talk to the media uh, will end and that becomes easy. The problem is that he himself has been adding to the burden as well. He has been he uh, continuously talking to the media, we saw that he uh, uh, spoke to or there was a claim, we didn't see a clear rebuttal uh, in legal terms coming from journal. Uh, 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 the interview that uh, he purportedly gave to Shahid Metla, a uh, very fine journalist. Uh, and after all this had happened, then all of a sudden uh, we thought that now it is over. Then uh, 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 Siddiqui Sahib, a senior Irfan Siddiqui Sahib, now he has written columns again 
uh, reflecting, uh, reflecting his interactions with General Saab. So all these issues are actually piling up because General Saab actually believes in talking a lot. I think he should be convinced not to talk that much. But when it comes to this idea of um, uh, you know damage, I don't think there can be any damage. One, okay. uh, Pakistan has spoken through its actions. Whenever Pakistan is attacked, Pakistan has given a befitting response. Uh, whenever terrorists have struck, Pakistan has made them realize what they are fighting against, right? Similarly, uh, General uh, Brigadier Saab was right about, uh, uh, you know, post Pulwama altercation between Pakistan and India. Uh, we made an example of the whole thing, right? After that, who would need any kind of speculation in the media? Yes, there is one third uh, um, uh, element that is very important to understand. Uh, I've been uh, working on defense beat for past 25 years, started with General Musharraf's time and have, have continued afterwards. So the, every year before the national budget, there used to be a presser, uh, a kind of closed door meeting or briefing for the media. Uh, usually our senior anchors never thought that it was worth going to, uh, but I used to go there. Uh, and it was about defense budget. So our defense ministry does this. It keeps on uh, making you aware that it is cutting back. So they, of course, tell you that there are um, you know, vehicles which need upgrade. There are other certain things as well. But uh, because that information is not passed on to the senior journalists or senior anchors, because they don't never bother to go to these places, mm. they actually mistook it. And I, I believe that what was being said was different from this. It was that, of course, uh, the argument that was being made uh, by the prime ministers of both sides, India and Pakistan, uh, was regarding poverty, right? It was an argument that was made uh, by Mian Nawaz Sharif also when he was PM and Narendra Modi as well, that why not invest that kind of money in the human development of your, your uh, fellow citizens? So that argument, uh, with the, when coupled with the, the sacrifices story that how much army is cutting back, this might have looked to somebody who was not that you know, accustomed to the idea that perhaps Pakistan's technology is falling apart and our army cannot be mobilized. I think our army has proven again and again that it, it mobilizes, it has fought battles, it has taken pressure on two borders simultaneously for quite some time, for 20 years now. So I have no doubt in my mind that okay. ISPR is right, that we can give any enemy befitting response. Absolutely. Uh, but Brigadi Harris, I also want to understand your perspective regarding uh, the impact that um, such conversations uh, may have also particularly within the military ranks, since we've seen um, recently, of course, with the kind of uh, politics that have been going on in the country, that there's been uh, issues with regards to perception regarding military's credibility um, or other issues within the ranks as well. And, of course, in terms of external issues as well, in the way that this is going to be viewed uh, by external uh, 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 values and, and the way that uh, external stakeholders will uh, consider uh, the issues surfacing between a former army chief and the current one. You see, some of the point is uh, at this time, misquoting and misleading the public by joining all this uh, discussion, and that was informal. And particularly at this time, when we have a find a difficult time when they, the social media and the people are talking about unnecessarily about the establishment role. So this is not the time to talk like this. And particularly though, I have a lot of respect for Naseem Zara, but I have no respect for Hamindir. I know he has been talking always like this. And this is a time to go and say we are very weak. We don't have, uh, uh, we are very weak, uh, old absolute weapon system. Let me assure you, Pakistan military has all the capabilities, strategic, and tactical level and we have an edge over India particularly because of our battle hardened troops professionally they are so good our air force and we have proven in on 27 February 2019 so this is this was not the time to talk like this if Jan Bajwa had said something and it was misquote or it took it wrongly 
then you should not say like this particularly the time is not good for those things and it was taken very negatively in the military in the uh, in army as a whole as well as externally by the our enemy particularly indian they then they were boasting a lot of thing that pakistan need not fit to void our technology our missile technology is the best in the world indian each and every inch of the area is covered by our, our missile technology our air force have proven we have indigenous production of uh, thunder 17 and then block 2 and 3 and indian are still trying to buy those rifles and then as you turn in high in the school to 35 but the issue is it is man behind the machine that right. you must remember and that is that is the uh, edge we have over indian and we have proven on 27th february 2019 so this is the time what i am saying is not just, uh, that is the general Asim Munir when went to line of control in Kashmir, then he spoke very candidly and openly, and he warned Indians that we are fully prepared. We never compromise option readiness. Whatever we have a crunch, that we have to do not administrative thing, like electricity, petrol expenditures, virtual conferences, like these simulators. But as far as our operational readiness and training, then there is no compromise, and we know what to do. And and Indian knows our battle hardened army. professionally we eliminate terrorism from pakistan pakistan soil and then of course bad luck with previous government decisions again they came and then we are fighting again but still we are fighting very gallantly and you know how much our officers and troops they are getting shahadat it leaves a very bad impression it is very taken very negatively with the all the people who the widows the parents of shaheeds it affects their morale a troops watching in in the information room they see what is, we are talking the nations talking about people certain people talking about like this so that is why to say in these contexts at this time our journalists particularly i know 99% are absolutely they are very clear about it but one or two they keep talking and i am very clear and open saying general hamid hamid uh, meer he is i think generally his uh, thinking towards military is not very positive and he need to change that thing right um with regards to of course uh, the issues uh, circulating around the media farooq i also want to understand that when whenever we take a look at the ispr uh, of course giving this response whether or not uh, this is something which is uh, uh, accurate and apt as a response by the uh, military's media wing um that needs to be put forward whenever such uh, uh, such an incident happens or if there is something that is misquoted or quoted out of context um is that is that the way that should be followed in the future as well in your opinion or do you think there needs to be any other way around to curb this no no uh, compared to the alternative that is uh, general bajwa himself talking to the anchors i think that this is the better option sure uh, because uh, in the past uh, what we have seen is that he would talk to anybody and if uh, this is the level of my perception as a journalist whatever is being told right uh, remember that uh, there used to be this game called telephone or uh, chinese whisper so to speak uh, where you would actually whisper something in the ear and that person would whisper something in the next person's ear in the end the entire story would change mm. if that is the perception level of my media then it is better that some correction comes the third option then becomes that if somebody actually makes some assertion uh, like imran khan saab keeps on doing and especially bajwa saab is targeted then you go to the court right this is the third option but i think that it is better that if there is any misperception that is clarified dispelled immediately by the right authority as long as um, uh, general bajwa himself cannot talk to the media i'm sure that he will prove to be the nightingale of the country once he actually comes out of this two years of uh, a ban uh, but uh, earlier brigadier sir was talking about um, pakistani missile technology being state of the art of uh, being fantastic so i just wanted to remind everybody especially you as well uh, that pakistani tea is also fantastic if you remember <laughs> uh, you know indian and indian actually told us that as well so we know how to fight we have the jazba the spirit that actually fights uh, remember that equipment is something else but people fight without that you actually throw a bomb uh, into a country's territory and run away and then you claim that you targeted somebody and then you keep on claiming 
that the trees that you killed were actually terrorists. This is what India has been doing. So this kind of story, uh, I'm, I'm fine with everything. My only concern right now is uh, that uh, we face very serious challenges like India, uh, like terrorism, uh, umpteen other challenges. We never know where exactly is the enemy lurking. But the problem is that uh, an army marches on its stomach. So we have to make sure that our economy actually starts looking up as well. Uh, regarding Hamid Mir, I, I, I beg to differ once again. Um, uh, let me, for the sake of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me come on record that he's a kind of a friend, uh, like elder brother. And he's, just let me remind everybody who's watching that he still has a bullet in, in his body. Mm. So um, I wouldn't go say that there was bad intention. Yes, we, our journalists as well as General Bajwa have the problem with filters. And those filters can be through conviction, through argument, uh, through c convincing, can be fixed. But apart from that, I don't think that we essentially need to believe that somebody wanted to do something wrong against the nation. All right. Thank <coughs> you for that. And thank you very much, uh, Brigadier Harris Nawaz, for joining us and being a part of the discussion. We're now going to be moving on to our next segment. And for that, let me welcome Mr. Mustafa Haider Sayed, who's the Executive Director of Pakistan China Institute, uh, with regards to, of course, the Chief of Army Staff's uh, visit to China and uh, what sort of defense relationship is now going to be expected between both the countries and the impact that is going to have on the overall relationship as well. Um, Mr. Mustafa, regarding, of course, uh, the Chief of Army Staff's visit, it's important, uh, of course, in terms of our historical ties with China. It's important in terms of the uh, current scenario that Pakistan is in and the need uh, for us to be able to move forward with better political and economic terms with China and of course our defense relationship as well. But in terms of uh, the uh, integral aspects of this particular visit and the impact that it's going to have, what do you think will be the key outcomes uh, from this particular visit? Thank you very much uh, and uh, very good evening and assalamu alaikum to uh, yourself and uh, who I've not met in a long time. Uh, I just returned from China this morning, actually. And uh, as far as your question is concerned, I think there are two major uh, uh, aspects to the visit of the army chief. Firstly is the traditional uh, historical military to military ties that we have. They've been long standing, and we know that our biggest supplier of military arms is the People's Republic of China now. And that is a consistent relationship that has been ongoing for the past many decades. And it has only become closer and uh, intertwined, particularly as uh, the regional situation we've seen has moved, particularly in the light of what happened in Ladakh uh, in the very recent past. Secondly is the uh, visit in terms of uh, strengthening CPEC and state-to-state uh, -state relations. Because as we know, that the Pakistan military has played a very critical role in uh, cementing uh, CPEC uh, in terms of providing security, which is a very critical area of the China-Pakistan economic corridor as it passes through Balochistan and other areas where we've seen uh, uh, foreign powers and other elements trying to sabotage and attack uh, Chinese interests in Pakistan. And we also see recently that because of our uh, weak economic situation, our uh, obligations to Chinese power projects were at some uh, uh, instances falling short, which obviously affected investor confidence of China in Pakistan. So these are two aspects. Uh, one is the traditional uh, military to military, and the second, which we can see is reflected in the army chief's meeting with the member of the political bureau, Wang Yi, who is, as you know, the, the top most diplomat of China now uh, and oversees foreign affairs from the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, which is the top six uh, Politburo is, of course, as you know, the top... Uh, uh, people uh, after the standing committee who uh, run China. So 
we can see that the fact that he had a meeting with Wang Yi is in itself, uh, as we know, Chinese culture, is, there's a lot of symbolism and uh, there are a lot of nuances. So the fact that he had a meeting with Wang Yi demonstrates the importance of his visit outside of also military to military ties. Right, absolutely. And, and we'll talk a bit more about that as well. And I'll, I'll come back to you for that. But Farouk, with regards to the CPAC projects, it's also important, of course, in terms of the way that we've been facing security challenges uh, regarding uh, the protection security of Chinese citizens in Pakistan. <coughs> and I understand that the statements coming in have reiterated the fact that whatever the international situation is, Pakistan and China will continue uh, to enjoy histor deep historical and strategic partnerships and, of course, with regards to defense and political relationship as well. But in terms of what Pakistan needs to bring to the table as well, especially with regards to the security of the Chinese citizens. What assurances do you think can be provided with regards to it and whether or not China is seeking any? All right, Sana, and that is a good, a good question. Before I answer that, let me reciprocate uh, uh, my salams uh, to, uh, actually send my salams to Mustafa. It has been quite a while, uh, good to see you here. Uh, but uh, regarding China-Pakistan relationship and especially the bit you actually mentioned, um, I think that Pakistan is doing whatever it can. Uh, first of all, we have actually raised a dedicated division to ensure that all these projects and workforces are protected. Remember when I went to Gawadar, I witnessed it um, uh, personally that how well protected the Chinese uh, you know, workforce was. But of course, uh, there are places like Karachi where they were, or Sin for that matter, they were now, uh, we saw some, uh, you know, disparate uh, cases of attacks. So, gradually, Pakistan is ensuring that all areas are protected. And then there's this also. Uh, remember that India, uh, what you are fighting with right now, especially since CPEC began, India, if you remember, we did a program back then as well, uh, a series of uh, programs actually that India has set aside millions of dollars to focus and to try to spoil a uh, you know, CPEC project. And after that, it ac actually has been showing. We even have Kalbosh and Yadav as a proof that India keeps on meddling in our affairs. Uh, since then, uh, Pakistan has tried to do whatever it can. But this cooperation between China and Pakistan, understanding, enhancing uh, you know, relationship, and then actually trying to understand what China wants, right? That is also very important. Because at this moment, I think that communication is uh, of key importance. You know, uh, the Chinese president um, has started his uh, third term in office. After that, there were massive changes in the government as well. New prime minister, new defense minister, new foreign minister. Uh, with that, uh, Pakistan's army chief has also changed. So our army chief actually goes there. We compare notes. We, we understand what is needed. There are many things that we could have done, we would do. But there is always, remember, that you are not talking about hardware. You are talking about human beings who are working in Pakistan, right? Human beings also have feelings. So on one side, you, what you can do is you can fortify and ensure that they don't uh, get exposed to any kind of threat. But they want to actually go out and meet people as well. They want to have uh, a good time as well. So that becomes a problem. Hmm. We'll gradually keep on working on it, and I'm sure that we will be able to foil all uh, the detractors' agendas. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Mustafa, with regards uh, to, of course, uh, the economic situation that you earlier pointed out as well and the importance that that's going to have on this, of course, we are still waiting for the IMF deal uh, to go through. And there have been uh, assurances that the IMF has required with regards to bilateral engagements and financial promises as well. And, of course, China has stepped up a lot in the past as well and may do so right now as well. But given the current scenario and the economic conditions, do you think any extra positive news may come out of this particular visit with regards to the financial situation of the country? Uh, actually, uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, China has been the first country to take the initiative to financially support Pakistan and to give us the uh, rollover finance that was required and which was also uh, required by IMF as a, almost as a prerequisite. And we've seen a few tranches come, which was also tweeted by the finance minister. 
I think that n more would not be uh, should not be ruled out because China's investment in Pakistan's economy is the single largest country uh, 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 compared to any other country in Pakistan. And for China, Pakistan's strong economy means a stronger partner for China in South Asia. So uh, I think that should be expected. I think that uh, there should be uh, prospective outcomes linked to our economic uh, connectivity with China regarding the further enhancing and expediting of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor projects, uh, which have slightly lagged because of our uh, current economic situation. And thirdly, uh, the reaffirmation, which was actually made during the meeting with the Central Military Commission of China uh, between General Asim Munir and the CMC, Ch Central Military Commission, where it has reaffirmed that while Pakistan-China relations is not against any third country, these are unbreakable and very, very deep relationships which will continue despite the fast-changing geopolitical regional scenario. And this is very critical because he's the first army chief to have visited uh, China of uh, any friendly country, uh, a friendly neighbor of China uh, after the pandemic. So this is a very significant visit. And uh, also since he's the new army chief, uh, he, he had not uh, had the, this high level interaction with the Chinese leadership. So it, sh it shows that Pakistan's international foreign affairs trajectory is unchanged, despite a lot of uh, skeptics and pundits who had uh, uh, question marked our slight change after uh, the new government had come in Pakistan. And also, as we saw the upping the ante of the new Cold War, so to speak, uh, in big power competition between Washington and Beijing. So our traditional long-standing and deep-seated relationship with Beijing is reaffirmed by this visit by General Asim Munir, uh, which, as I said, has been reflected in his not only meeting with the Central Military Commission, but also with the uh, Mr. Wang Yi, who is the member of the Politburo and who is the spearheads China's foreign affairs internationally. And uh, so I think it's so far a very successful visit. And uh, I, I think I agree, as Farooq pointed out, that we must safeguard this core interest of China, which is also our shared core interest of protecting Chinese investors and Chinese interests in Pakistan. Because to be very honest, China is the biggest investor in Pakistan uh, who is actually keeping uh, uh, keeping us afloat, literally right, and, and Right, and um, I want to talk a little bit more about what you said um, uh, with regards to uh, the relationship not being against any other country. And Farooq, we've seen that perhaps the visit of the Chief of Army Staff is also being looked at uh, from this particular lens as well, with tensions being high uh, with India and China as well across the Himalayan border. And I understand that the relationship is beyond that of uh, being against any other country. But what sort of impact um, will this have, not just on the particular visit, but in, in general terms as well between uh, Pakistan and China, uh, the way that the current scenario is moving uh, between India and China. Right, uh, Sana, you, this is a good question, but uh, Mustafa was uh, generous when he said that it, it, it is not against anybody. But uh, frankly, if India keeps on attacking both the countries, why should I pretend that India is not going to get whatever it, uh, it is asking for, right? Uh, right now, I think that uh, India is trying to play the victim and still uh, continues to annoy China. And similarly, it has done whatever it has done towards Pakistan as well, and whatever it is doing in Kashmir. Uh, so uh, it becomes incumbent on both these countries to actually keep on looking and be vigilant. Uh, in fact, uh, if you have uh, followed Indian, prime, uh, Indian uh, Army Chief's uh, interview and the previous Indian Army Chief's or their CDS's interview, they keep on talking about two foot and war, right? They essentially talk about uh, their desire to engage both um, uh, China and Pakistan. So we have to be vigilant as well. Uh, but the more important thing is that somehow 
in the past 20 years, especially after the arrival of uh, uh, you know, clash of civilization thesis, India is one country that has really capitalized on that. Uh, Pakistan is a Muslim country. Of course, it was being framed as a possible clash between the West and Islam. And then the next threat was said to be, uh, you know, the Confucius civilization, right? Because of that, of course, uh, India gets the best advantage. So we have wasted 20 years because that propaganda has continued and India is better placed. But because it has become billions of dollars worth of industry, Pakistan and China ha will have to come together to fight, combat that uh, propaganda as well. And then, of course, because China has pulled a miracle already, China has uh, shown through its, uh, you know, um, uh, mediation that it can actually bring on table countries like uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran. And now, well, recently I heard that they are even offering Palestinians and Israelis to sit together as well. So I will hope that someday they can uh, do their magic and bring uh, India and Pakistan on the table as well. Mm. Uh, uh, India, China has shown to the world that it does not want war with anybody. I'm glad that the US uh, National Security Advisor yesterday actually spoke in uh, uh, DC where in presentation he said that we are not going to talk about, uh, you know, decoupling now. We are going to uh, talk about de-risking. That means that don't have any risk, but uh, competition is okay. We are not going to totally disengage. So I think that is good news as well. So we get another chance to fight India's propaganda in the past. Great. Thank you very much, Farooq. And thank you, Mr. Mustafa Hadis Sayed, for joining us and being a part of the discussion as well. Of course, there's a lot that still uh, remains to be seen, but we can only hope for the best. And of course, our uh, relationship uh, with China is only going stronger. And uh, that is what the Chief of Army Staff is doing in China as well. And of course, the rest of the country as well. And we hope for new good news coming out of this visit. That's all that we have from the debate. We'll see you now on Monday. Have a nice weekend.